Hello, Cello. My name's Chris Wilson. And in this video, we're going to be dissecting the Donut Hard Fork. The Donut Hard Fork will go live May 19th, 2021. That'll be a, a nice day. I will be celebrating and watching it live if you guys want to join. Now that the Cello community is less than a week away from the Donut Hard Fork, it felt like the right time to make a video and go over what a hard fork is, how forks work, especially for a proof of stake network like Cello. If you're a node operator on Cello, please follow the link down below to upgrade to Donut Hard Fork in the forum post to version 1.3.2 prior to activation date on May 19th, 2021. Release notes for V1.3.2 can also be found in the description below. But Chris, what, what's a hard fork? And what does Donut do for the Cello network? And that's where you're in luck. We'll be going over what a hard fork is, why coordination is important in decentralized ecosystems, and what bag of goodies will be included in the Donut hard fork for Cello. What is a hard fork? Hard forks in the past have led to lots of confusion by network stakeholders given the large coordination efforts needed to make them successful. Hard forks fall into two camps, contentious and non-contentious. Cont contentious hard forks are common in proof-of-work networks, with the DAO fork resulting in Ethereum and Ethereum Classic, and the Bitcoin block size wars resulting in the birth of Bitcoin Cash as a fork of Bitcoin. Hard forks, more importantly, can also be non-contentious, and really just a way of saying network upgrades. With non-contentious hard forks, that is how networks like Ethereum and Celo can activate new features on the blockchain. EIP, or Ethereum Improvement Proposal 1559, will activate in Ethereum's London hard fork. Celo's donut hard fork will activate a lot of features that are covered in the next section. Before we go into what a hard fork is in blockchain networks, let's take a look at how changes like feature additions, bug fixes, and upgrades happen in regular software. In regular software, upgrades happen asynchronously by the user and don't require a lot of coordination from the developers. Think of that time you upgraded your Spotify app on the App Store it didn't require you to coordinate with the Spotify developers in order to do it. For distributed systems like blockchain networks that require node operators, coordination is vital because you and the other nodes in the network need to agree on the state of the network. Using the Spotify example, imagine when you download the Spotify app. You're downloading the entire history of the Spotify music database. Everyone who is running a node would have an entire copy of the Spotify music database. So every node must agree on the database state. Now, let's say one of the nodes decides to add a new music track to the database. This must be replicated to all the other nodes in order to agree on it and add it to their copy of the database. This is generally how blockchains work with ledgers and transactions sending money between users, Alice and Bob. So how are blockchain software features added? Now, what if we want to modify the software of a blockchain network? What if we want to add new features to it? Unfortunately, we can't have nodes upgrading their clients right away to activate those features given the large coordination problem in blockchains. The reason is because if some users upgrade their node before others do, they might have a different state of changes that other nodes who haven't upgraded don't necessarily agree on. Returning to the Spotify example again, imagine Spotify released some video feature to its application. You download the new version of the app with that feature and your friend hasn't. Now imagine you wanted to send your friend a video link from Spotify. Because they haven't upgraded yet, they will get an error if they open that link. Their older software is inconsistent with the newer Spotify version. This disagreement on state when caused by premature activation 
will cause network splits in proof of work networks, where you end up with two different chains, each agreeing on a different state of the network. This is essentially what makes a fork. The network split feature luckily doesn't exist in proof of stake networks like Celo, but it's important to minimize any disruption as a result of clients adding features ahead of others. Furthermore, while Celo is EVM based like Ethereum, EVM meaning Ethereum virtual machine, hard forks aren't the only way features get added on Celo. Celo also includes on-chain governance, which allows network participants to vote on proposals on-chain every six to eight weeks. If you'd like to know more about on-chain governance, I've linked to a video I made about voting on Celo in the comments down below. How do we avoid the impact of consensus failure? How do we avoid the impact of some clients having a different state than others when they upgrade? We schedule the upgrade to occur at a specific block number in the future, say 30 to 60 days after the release of the new client software upgrade. In this approach, the core developers release the blockchain client software and ask every node operator to upgrade to that new version. But because the activation of those features happen far in the future, 30 to 60 days, the clients upgrading right away won't cause an inconsistent state change among the nodes in the network and break consensus. This way, we can coordinate with all nodes in the network to upgrade to the hard fork enabled software version and give them a bit of time to plan their upgrade process prior to the hard fork. As long as a majority of the nodes in the network upgrade ahead of the hard fork, the network can safely upgrade and activate the hard fork when the block number approaches later. For the Celo network, as long as a quorum of validators upgrade ahead, the donut hard fork will activate smoothly. This is different from proof of work hard forks that don't have a definition of quorum, but define things via majority and minority chains. For the purpose of this post, we won't go too deeply into proof of work hard forks, but we'll instead just focus on Celo and proof of stake. With coordination for a hard fork like Cello's donut done prior to the activation date, this will allow us to anticipate when the network upgrades will happen since it is scoped out by the block number. In donut, we know that the hard fork will activate on May 19th around 2 p.m. Eastern because we assigned a block number of 6,774,000. This is because Celo blocks are a constant of five seconds per block, which would allow us to predict at what time in the day the hard fork will happen. This is different from proof of work chains where block times can vary with difficulty changes in mining. So in this example, for Celo's donut hard fork, a hard fork is just another way of saying network upgrade. It's just that this network upgrade requires heavy coordination from the network participants, like any other hard fork would. What is happening in Donut? So now that we went over what a hard fork is, let's explore what's in store for us with Cello's Donut hard fork. The Donut hard fork specification is in CIP 27, but we will go over some of the proposals added in this post. If you would like to read more about these upgrades and changes, you can find all of them linked in the description down below. The first really awesome CIP is CIP 20, written by James Prestwich, which adds an extensible pre-compile that will provide access to many hash functions on the Ethereum virtual machine, including SHA3, SHA2-512, and Blake 2s. In similar terms, this means adding a pre-compile that allows hashing functions like SHA3 and others to be available in a much cheaper way that was previously unavailable for Solidity developers. It also allows for inclusion of new hash functions in the pre-compile and will help with the Plumo project by providing the ability to slash validators according to the snark-friendly Plumo messages encoded in Epoch blocks. Cello Improvement Proposal 25 
is a cool proposal by the Chorus 1 team and is a rework of EIP-665, adding a precompile for cheaply verifying ED25519 signatures in smart contracts. This will make interoperability much easier with other Layer 1 projects like Cosmos, Near, and Solana. CIP-30 and CIP-31 are based on EIP-2547 and EIP-2539, adding 16 precompiles for BLS 12-381 and 12-377 signatures. The Cello improvement proposals would allow verifying high security and broadly accepts BLS signatures and pairing based zero-knowledge proofs, such as signatures and proofs used on Cello, the Plumo project, and ETH2, among other things. CIP35, which is highly anticipated by the Cello community and myself, will allow full compatibility with Ethereum tooling and wallets. This means that MetaMask will be able to work seamlessly with Celo applications because Celo will allow for both Celo transaction formats and Ethereum ones. In the past, Celo transaction formats added three new fields which made them incompatible with the other Ethereum and EVM-based ones. CIP35 will enable Ethereum-based transaction formats. How cool is that? Oh, I am so excited. We also have other exciting changes added to Celo and Donut, like Celo Improvement Proposal 21 for a governable lookback window, and CIP 28 to split the Ether base. If you're a validator, that's very exciting news. Helpful changes for validators running on the network also include CIP 22 for Epoch SNARK data for the Plumo Ultralight Client Protocol, and CIP 26, which adds a precompile for getting the BLS public key. Read an overview of the entire Donut specifications in CIP 27 in the link down below. Donut is the first of many hard forks that will be planned for Celo, and the first hard fork of the new generation Layer 1 proof of stake networks such as Near, Solana, and Polkadot. We are very excited for this new milestone. If you are a node operator on Celo, please follow the instructions below to upgrade to the Donut Hard Fork. So one of the proposals that I am the most excited about myself is MetaMask. If you've never used MetaMask, I'll be giving you a quick rundown on how to get started using MetaMask. That way, your wallet's already set up and ready to connect to Celo when the 19th comes. So we will click on download now. I'm currently on a Chrome browser, so I will download the Chrome extension. We will add to Chrome, add extension. And boom, boom, boom. Oh, look at that, isn't that cool? He's so cute. All right, let's get started. If you already have a seed phrase for a MetaMask, you can import it here. But since we will be creating a new one, let's click on Create a Wallet. So this is an added layer of protection uh, to create a password. This is not your key or your seed phrase. This is an extra layer of protection to allow you to sign in and out of your account without having to interact with your keys every time. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a password agree to the terms, and create. Now here's where it gets a little tricky. So we want to back up our phrase, but we want to do it securely. There's a couple ways to do it. You can get a crypto steal like this, and there's a, a bunch of different kinds, but this is basically a metal, fireproof, waterproof way for you to store your seed phrase and not have to worry about um, anything crazy happening to it. Now, I'm going to click here. These are my words. You do not want to do this uh, on your side, like copy and paste them. What you want to do is write them down yourself on a piece of paper and then put them in a crypto still, st steal, uh, back them up on a ledger, all kinds of ways to, uh, to do this in a safer way than 
this. Never share this with anybody. If anybody ever asks you for your, your seed phrase, you're 100% getting scammed. So we'll click next. And now it wants me to make sure that I did indeed do this. So we have, so basically it's just gonna have you input them in the order that they were so that it makes sure that you did do them in the right order. Yay, congratulations. So again, save a backup in multiple places. Never share the phrase with anybody. Be careful of phishing. MetaMask will never spontaneously ask for your seed phrase. If you need to back up your seed phrase again, you can find it in settings, security. If you ever have questions or see something fishy, contact our support team. MetaMask cannot recover your seed phrase. You are responsible for it. And then you can, uh, you can get the MetaMask on your phone and then scan the QR code and it will be connected. So now this is what your main MetaMask look, looks like. I like to go ahead and start here. And then now here we're gonna go into settings. And I like to switch my primary currency over to fiat. It makes it a little easier for me. You can change your language here. Uh, use blockies identification, hide tokens without balance. Uh, USD, you can set that, advanced. We want to do advanced gas controls on. And yep, I think that's uh, that's all that I normally do here. Yeah, okay, now we can go back to our account. Um, well, real quick, over here. Here's support, settings, kind of did that already. Connect your hardware wallet. If you have a ledger, it's, it's highly recommended to keep everything on your ledger and then use MetaMask through your ledger and that'll add even extra layers of protection. You can import an account. Uh, you can have as many accounts in here as you want. So like I can create another account here and be able to switch through and have multiple accounts for different reasons, which actually becomes kind of useful. Now here's where we can change our, uh, our network. So we're on Ethereum mainnet. Now if we go back here, we can hit add token and you can look up tokens. As we see, Celo's not on here yet. So let's add a token just for demonstration purposes. And let's see if we can add some GRT. So we'll go next, add token. And now we, if we go back for account one, we can see that we have GRT added and ETH. So now say we wanna send, you'd click on the send. Now up here we can either buy and this is a third party. This is not um, part of MetaMask. So, you know, careful there. And they're pretty expensive. So what I like to do is buy from um, a central exchange, something that's real low fees like Celo, and then switch it out and swap on Uniswap if I want to. Here's their swaps options. So if we had any, we could see, let's go one ETH. And say we wanted to put it into uni, review the swap. And it's going to check all of the exchanges and hopefully find the best offer for me. Now this right here is, uh, is why I don't like Ethereum. That is, ouch, 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 ouch. But yeah, so that's the basics for MetaMask. I uh, will have uh, a video linked down below that goes into a lot more depth on MetaMask. I didn't want to uh, overwhelm you guys, especially if you already know how to use MetaMask, but you can look forward to an updated video for how to use MetaMask with Celo after the 19th. Other than that, let me know down below how excited you guys are and what Celo improvement protocol you're most excited about. As always, if you had any trouble uh, following this video or you would like to simply discuss Celo or the donut hard fork, you can join our Discord in the link down below. I look forward to seeing you there and until next time, happy owning. Donut is coming. Donut is coming.